All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to use the rational roots theorem and the Cacht rule of signs to find all the zeros of the following polynomial. 5x to the fourth minus 59x cubed plus 33x squared plus 119x plus 22. So, first of all, let's try to use the rational roots theorem to guess what the roots might be. And here's what I mean by that. So, step one, what does the rational roots theorem say? It says that if this polynomial has a root that is a fraction, so if uh, f has a root or zero or root of the form x equals to p over q, then x must have a very specific form. So, in other words, the, root, the rational roots of this polynomial must have a very specific structure. Namely the following. If x equals p over q, then the numerator must divide the constant term. So then, p must divide. 22, and the denominator, q, must divide the leading term. So q must divide 5. Now, here's the thing. There's not that many numbers that divide 22 and divide 5. Because, for instance, well, 1 divides 22. So that works, but also minus 1 divides 22. That's fine. 2 divides 22, but also minus 2. And then let's think about it. So 22 is 2 times 11. So 11 divides 22, but also minus 11. And lastly, 22 divides 22. So that works. And then the denominator must divide 5. There are even fewer numbers that divide 5. I mean, 1 divides 5 and minus 1 and 5 divides 5 and minus 5 divides 5. So you see, this gives us all the possible choices of the numerator and all possible choices of the denominator. So the only question that remains is, what kind of fractions can you construct, can you build, with numerator any of those numbers and denominator any of those numbers? Well, let's think a little bit about this. Like, what do we have? We have, let's say, 1 over 1, which is 1, or 1 over minus 1, which is minus 1, 2 over 1, which is 2, but also minus 2, 11 over 1, which is 11, but also minus 11, 22 over 1, which is 22, but also minus 22. And then you can do the same spiel, but with 5, so 1 over 5, which is 1 fifth, but also minus 2 over 5, which is 2 fifths, 11 over 5, which is 11 fifths, and 22 over 5, which is 22 fifths. Now again, what is this saying? First of all, we're not saying that the polynomial has to have a root that's a fraction. We're not even saying that the polynomial even has to have a root. It could have no zeros. But, if it has a root that is a fraction or an integer, it must be one of those 16 choices. So, for example, it cannot have root 3, because 3 is not one of those choices. It cannot have root 2 thirds, because it's not one of those choices. So, if it has a root that's a fraction, then it must be one of those 16 things. Now, for this problem, 
If you want, you could just plug in all 16 choices until you find turns out 4 that works. But that's a little bit time consuming, so let's see a little bit if we can find some shortcuts. And one shortcut is given by Descartes' rule of science. And I want to emphasize this step that I'll talk about. For this problem, it's not necessary. But I do want to mention this Descartes rule of sign a little bit. So step two. Okay. So Descartes rule of sign. So Descartes in French means from the cards, literally. And so again, let's look at the polynomial. So it has to do with how many times the coefficients change sign. So 5x to the fourth minus 59x cubed plus 33x squared plus 119x plus 22. And what Descartes rule of sign answers is the question how many positive root does this um, a polynomial have? So how many positive zeros? Okay. And for this, again, you have to figure out how many times the coefficients change sign. So for instance, here 5 is positive, minus 59 is negative. So you're changing signs once already. Then you go from minus 59, which is negative, to 33, which is positive. So you're changing signs again. Now you're going from 33 positive to 119, which is positive. So you're not changing signs. And from positive to positive, you're not changing signs. So. How many times do you change signs at the end? Twice. But this is not the answer of how many positive roots there are. Descartes' rule of sign says, in this case, there are either two positive roots or whatever, so two minus two. So two subtracted by an even number. So it's either two or 2 minus 2, which is 0. So in other words, the answer here is 2 and 0. And let me just elaborate how I got this answer. Suppose you found 4, then the answer would be 4. And you always subtract 2 until you find something 0 or maybe negative. Then 4 minus 2, which is 2. And then you still subtract 2 at which point you get zero. Okay? So in that case, if you found four changes of signs, it would be four, two, and zero. Suppose you found five, then what would the answer be? Five, five minus two, which is three, okay? and then three minus two, which is one, and then you would stop. So in this case, because if you subtract two more, it would give you a negative number. So if you found 5, it would be 5, 3, and 1. Okay. So in this case, we finally know that it's 2 and 0. So it either has 0 roots, positive roots, or it has 2 positive roots. In particular, I want to emphasize the reason why this is useful, because this is saying you cannot have 3 positive roots. So if you already found two, in this case, you would be done. Yeah. Now, the question is also, the nice thing about Descartes' rule of sign is that it also tells you how many negative roots there are. So how many negative roots? And here's the trick. If x is a positive root, minus x is a negative root, which leads us to examine f of minus x. So let's do f of minus x. 
which is 5 times minus x. Again, every instance of x we replace by minus x, minus 59, minus x cubed, plus 33, minus x squared, plus 119 times minus x, plus 22. So let's look at what this looks like. This gives us, well, if you simplify, that is 5x to the fourth. Now, this gives you minus x cubed, but because of this minus, we get a plus. So plus 59x cubed plus 33x squared minus 119x plus 22. And now let's see how many times there is a change in sign. So here we go from 5 to 59, so positive to positive, so no change in sign. Positive, positive, no change in sign. Positive to negative, one change in sign. Negative to positive, one change in sign. So the question is now, so how many negative roots? The answer is either two, or you subtract 2 until you find 0. So 2 or 2 minus 2, which is 0. So it turns out here, same answer as positive roots. So there, either no positive roots and, or two positive roots, and there are either no negative roots or two, and, or two negative roots, right? which again tells you a little bit about how to locate them. Ideally, maybe try to look for two positive roots and two negative roots. That's my suggestion. Now, as I said, that section was optional. It doesn't really help us that much. What helps us is now the next step. Because remember, there were 13, no, sorry, 16 possible roots. And I'd like to remind you, so step three. So what we found is that x is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus, uh, let me just check, uh, 11, plus or minus 22, and still plus or minus 1 fifth, uh, plus or minus 2 fifths, plus or minus 11 fifths, and plus or minus 22 fifths. And of course, the question is, which one of those roots works? Now, I know it sounds horrible for me to say as a mathematician, but I mean, this is 2020. Try to plot this function in a calculator, because again, you have to figure out what your guesses are. As long as you guess correctly, then you found a root. So this is actually very legit. And if you plot this function in your calculator, you should find something like that. Some polynomial that goes through some number slightly bigger than 10. So if this is 10, this might be this number. Some, and it goes through the number 2. Okay. This you can check. And then, doesn't go through 0. It goes through some weird number. And then it goes through minus 1. And from this, we can already guess what some of the roots are. So, first of all, once you graph the function, okay, you can see that it goes to 2. So already, if you plug in f of 2, which again was uh, 5 times 2 to the 4th, mi uh, minus 59 times 2 cubed plus 33 times 2 squared okay? and then plus 119 times 2 plus 22. If you actually plug that into your calculator, you should get 0. 
which tells you that two works. So we already found one root, two. Okay. Let me put this here. Similarly, if you look at this in your calculator, so if you, I mean, look at this on your graph, and you might suspect that minus one is a root. If you plug this into your calculator, okay. so if you do f of minus one, which in this case I believe is just five plus 59 okay, uh, plus 33 minus 119 plus 22 should also give you zero. So you see from the graph you suspect that it's minus one but if you plug it in it gives you zero which means that minus one is also a root. Next one on your graph you see that the function goes through a number slightly bigger than 10. Well, the only number here that's slightly bigger than 10 is 11. So 22 would be somewhere here, very far. And in fact, if you plug in f of 11, you should find uh, 0. Last but not least, notice there is this little root here between minus 1 and 0. So you just need to look which fractions here are between minus 1 and 0. Well, there is minus 1 fifth and minus 2 fifths. Because you see minus 11 fifths, it's way smaller than minus 1. Minus 22 fifths, even worse. So in fact, this tells you that there are only two other things to check. You only need to check f of minus one-fifth and f of minus two-fifth. And if you calculate both of those things, you should find that this is zero. So another root would be minus one-fifth. Now, the question is, are we done? Yes for two reasons. First of all, um, the f of x, it's a polynomial of degree 4, which tells you it has at most four roots. Here we found four roots. Here's another reason why we're done. Remember Descartes rule of signs. It says that there are either 0 or 2 positive roots, which we found here, 2 and 11, and there are 0 or 2 negative roots. And notice here we found 2 negative roots. So this is again in keeping with the Cart rule of signs. If you found uh, 3 positive roots, you would be in trouble. And again, why is this useful in practice? Suppose you found the roots 2 and 11, then you would be done with the positive roots. Because we know there are only 2 of them at most. And then you would go on to the negative roots. All right, I hope you like this little excursion into polynomials. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.